is all that should matter. And what everybody else does, I have people even around me that say, oh, Jim, you're holding back. You should be giving more interesting information. You should be doing this and that. And I'm going, you know, I can only do what I can do. And they can only tell me what they tell me. And they only <laughs> channel what they channel. So, you know, that's yes. what it is. And um, I can't change it. Exactly. Oh, hello, Johannes. I wouldn't want to. Hello, Johannes. Long time no talk to you, my friend. I keep missing your music, your hangouts and stuff. I'm so sorry. Our schedules haven't jived, but I uh, it's just okay. so you know, it's just so me. you know, I want to be there. I want to be there, but I it's just been crazy for me on the last couple of months. So anyway, well, you don't miss you don't miss anything, sister. So much love. <laughs> Well, hello everybody. My name is Johannes. For those who don't know me, hi Johannes. I know you. Hi Jean. Hi. I wanted to join you today. To just. What did you say, Jean? Who's Who's Max's friend? He has a friend in the room. Hello, Max's friend. And it's good to see you, Johannes. Very it's good. nice to hear your voice, also, Jim. Like always, it's always Thank nice. Thank you. It's good to hear yours too. It's nice that we have a nice class, and I know that uh, Wendy survived the class we had over last weekend, the channeling class. Oh, good, good, goodness gracious! I'll tell you what, that class that weekend that was like the most epic event of my entire existence. That was like I'm still, my body is still vibrating and reeling, and I can't even tell you. But yes, that was an amazing class, Jim. Thank you. Katie was there too. Yes, it was yep. fantastic. Mm -hmm. She sure was. I'm. Oh, I, I'm sure she agrees. <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> you guys were terrific. It was wonderful meeting you. And um, I'm still reeling from that experience as well. In fact, there was a couple of nights I couldn't sleep because I was thinking about all the different I things. Know. I know. And the more pictures I look at, the more it brings back. And I've been posting them and posting. I still have more and more and more pictures. Oh, to post, I'm so happy to hear that. Wendy, send me those directly to my email because I... Get a, I'm technologically retarded, and I know. Oh, you're so funny. Well, you know where I've been posting them, Jim, is I've been posting them on the Solstice Retreat on the Facebook page. Uh, oh, um, so you okay. can see all the pictures there. All right. And, I think I will, start. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yep. Hey, hey Max. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, so we are officially starting. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, hi, Astrid. Hey, Jim. Hi. Hey, Johannes. Hi, Medi. Hi. Hi. It's Katie. What? Katie. Oh, Medi and Katie is the same thing, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> no, Spiral and Katie. Or is Maddie the and Katie the same thing? Oh, no. Matt, no, no, no. No, I no, no. Said... Maddie is one person, Katie is another. Yes. Yeah, I thought so. So Spiral is, uh, and Katie is the same thing. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. Uh, hey, Mehdi, and hey, Stan, and hi, Wendy. Hello. So we have already um, established channelers here, more channelers than uh, students, <laughs> uh, which is all right. Uh, it, it's wonderful that you joined. Um, I will start, you know, my um, recent – I welcome everybody – my recent – Inspiration was that let's start as high as possible and keep it as high as possible. So I will okay. start with a chant, and uh, I will take first hour and a half, and then Jim will continue. And um, uh, I will start with a chant, and we'll go from there. Now, how is the sound, by the way? I think it should Good. be fun. Yeah? Perfect. All right. <clears throat> 
Oh, thank you all for joining. Uh, we thank the Divine Mother, the Creator, all the spiritual supporters for bringing us here today. Channeling is next logical step. It is becoming natural. It is becoming absolutely natural for humanity. It is just the next step of our development. So we are not the first ones to channel. We are not the first ones to do the channeling class. Bashar is doing channeling classes. There are other channeling classes. The tradition of channeling is very ancient. And in ancient times, channelers and saints were the same. They channeled the spirits, the manifestations of God. Then the tradition was broken, so we start over. But we have the guidance. We have the channelers as guidance. So the spirits are teaching us again. And as you channel, it is, as Jim mentioned, not much responsibility. It's a service where you provide yourself for the spirit to come and to deliver the message. So it is up to the spirit to deliver the message. And it's up to the spirit to define the content of the message. You are just a channel. And the first thing I want with I uh, want to go with the initiation of everybody all at once. <clears throat> mm -hmm. First thing is the question: Is it okay to channel? Is it all right to channel? Am I permitted to channel? And the answer is yes. It's all right to channel. You are permitted to channel. You have the permission to channel. Yahana, yala, yahana, yala, yaha, and I, yahana, yala, hi, yana, hi, yana, hi, yana, hum. Aluna, yana, yana, I so breathe in deeply and with that receive the permission to channel. You are permitted. That is your natural right to channel. And breathe out and take it easy. It is permitted. You are now permitted to channel. All right, um, prepare your questions. Um, I will take questions, and if you don't mind, type in the topic of your question, and uh, just like a couple of words, so I can pick up the topic which matches to what I want to uh, discuss. And um, I will give you uh, the, the, the chance to offer your question, or the comment, or the sharing. So, the easiest, so if you already channel, it's, uh, it, I hope the class will help, help you to understand more a little bit of the mechanics, how to, how to channel, how to live with the channeling, how to interpret the channeling. And if you don't, same thing, it will open the door for you and um, make it easier to, to shift into the channeling. So, as you know, there are many ways to channel. And to make it easier, to realize that everybody is channeling. 
everybody is channeling already. It is a natural state of life here. You are always connected to the spirit. You are always in the presence of the divine. Everyday life is is your expression of the divine. And it's only up to your mind to realize that. That's about it. So you already channel. Everything you do is channeling. It's only the confusion, the delusion that you are not. So waking up from that delusion is basically the art of channeling. So just realizing that you're already channeling is sufficient. Now, which expressions of daily life are more representative of channeling? Obviously, when the spirit speaks through you, when the spirit works through you, when the divine works through you. And that's especially when you're kind, especially when you work for the best of others, for the good of others, when you are creative and when you express your true self and especially when you invite randomnicity in your life and that randomnicity becomes expressed as harmony. So when ra random things or seemingly random things come out and become harmonious the beauty comes from the chaos, that's the expression of the divine. And, you know, the examples are many. Their improvisation is one, creative writing, creative speaking, anything creative is, okay. is one. <clears throat> now, what uh, trans channelers do, they, it's called trans channel, when you completely allow your body to be possessed, up, um, governed, ruled by a spirit. So possessed in a good way. So they possess, they own your body temporarily, rent. So it's more like renting. And they don't pay, so it's more like borrowing, I guess. you. Land, yeah, land would be a better word. Instead of possession forever, it would be lending for a temporary possession. So temporary lending your body to the spirit and stepping aside, your conscious ego steps aside and only provides a service, only serves to the spirit to speak. That's trans-channeling. And the art of that is a little harder for many. It's certainly hard for me. I feel exhausted when I do that. And I also feel threatened. So so that's art. And you know, we have best examples of Bashar and Jim who channel using trans channel. And they just step out and sometimes they hear what is said and sometimes they don't even hear what is said. It really depends on which spirit comes and to which extent does the spirit come. Sometimes they come through a little entrance and only deliver the message, and sometimes they come fully through the whole body, and and uh, and there are different gradations of that. Yeah, type your topics in, in, in the chat box so I, uh, I can pick the, the questions when you're ready. Um, do you have any questions so far? Am I alone here? Can I? Can you hear me? I can hear you. You're here. Hi, Max. Yeah, we're, no, this is very, very interesting. Um, I actually, I'm on my tablet, so I don't have my chat box. Um, and this is, this is Wendy, sorry. Um, but you actually dropped in right exactly where I was. It was such perfect synchronicity for me, perfect harmony, because 
This is exactly what I wanted to ask you about was the difference between the conscious channeling and the <clears throat> and the trance channeling in that I seem to go back and forth between the two, but I don't I still haven't let myself completely go to the trance channel, I think for all of those reasons. Trust, a little bit of fear. Um, I do, though there's a lot of times when I'm channeling, I really don't remember what I've said. So, but with that said, I still feel like in a conscious way, I'm not allowing myself to go into that deep of the state for several different reasons. And how do we as channelers overcome those little steps, you know, to allow ourselves to trust the information coming in and out and allowing ourselves to step aside completely. How did you, yes, how did you start channeling? How did you go from non-channeling to, to, to trans-channeling or to whatever channeling, conscious channeling and then trans-channeling? What was the path? What, what was your path? Um, the path was listening to other channelers, finding all of you guys, speaking galactic languages was the key for me. Speaking galactic languages for me was the key to, that unlocked all of the doors for channeling. Absolutely. So yes, um, it is a path for many. Like some people, obviously, they are starting up. They already channel. For them, would be the art of channeling would be not to how to channel, but how to live normal life, normal, 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 down to earth life. You know, ah, when, and when you. When you say that, I don't mean to interrupt you, but when you say that, I would agree that I've been channeling all my life because I've always been a writer, a poet, um, a lyricist. Um, so I was, I know I was always channeling. I've always been clairvoyant, um, felt that I could speak with animals and plants and, and spirits beyond. And, and, and so that wasn't, so for me, it was actually very, it felt very natural for me, extremely natural. And so my very first channelings, I would have to say, were automatic writing. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, so there are many paths. And for me, it was also a path. And I'm still on it. I'm still somewhere in the middle, I guess. So for me, it was, um, uh, you know, the creative part, right? And um, in high school, it was a, a mathematical boot camp. Boot camp. So they trained us to solve, crack the mathematical and physical problems like on time. So you have to really come up with answer in certain time. And me and you know another person were best in class in the class. And um, for me, it was a way to to shift on the other side, turn on intuition, and just receive the answer. So it wasn't conscious logical process. It was how do I translate the question to the spirit in a way it's most optimal for the speed, right? So I have to translate the question and then turn on my receiver, energize it so it really takes energy to, to receive the message. And then wait for the answer. And when you got the answer, it was like, okay, I, I'm getting it. Now, how do I translate it to human language? And then I get skilled to translate it back to, to whatever teacher is expecting from me, right? So that was one of the, how do you call it, you know, channeling, big channeling lessons. For, for three years in the teenage, teenage age, uh, a lot, a lot of training. And in parallel, I was writing poetry, love poetry, of course. And, um, and it is the same thing you first start with something which seems to be like either your agenda or something completely random like like color pick a color yellow and go from there building your creative process but then you step aside and after a few words you let the spirit tell you their part and for me there um uh, Understanding was that you have to get into the zone, into the vibration. And for the poetry, there is, if you analyze it, analyze, you realize there are several vibrations. There is voice vibration, ooh, the, ooh, right? There is 
different sound vibrations. Then there is a written a beat of the poetry, and there are lines, and in these lines there is a more complex pattern. And if you analyze the genius poems of others, you just see impossible, beautiful patterns within the poetry. And the more you look at the one poem, which could be like really short, you start seeing other dimensions there. And you realize only the spirit could come up with that perfection. Because usually those kind of poems are not written through evolution. You just don't start from dirt and pu purify it to absolute perfection. You just channel the perfection right away and maybe fix a little bit it but but usually it's it's perfect from the scratch and that usually is also a, ch a case with channeled poetry which Jim channeled a lot all right so what, what I'm saying is it's a dialogue it's a dialogue and is in my math classes it was a dialogue with the spirit in poetry it was a dialogue with the spirit and in channeling it's a dialogue with the spirit and sometimes you work as a conscious translator you translate the question to them and translate the answer back and sometimes it becomes automatic so your consciousness your physical mind just steps steps aside and everything happens automatically which doesn't happen much to me yet. I have these seconds of direct channeling, but usually it's it's me actively doing the translation. But I believe for for Bashar and for Jim and for other talented perfect channelers, it's it's it becomes automatic. Now the path, yeah. So the path of galactic languages is the one which many people in our community went through and it works. And again analyzing how it works, it's interesting, right? So so again it's an, it's 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 not a new thing, right? Galactic languages which is Pleiadian, Lyran, Arcturian, Reptilian, Syrian and many others. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, these languages come through, so a result is we have webinars when people come and sometimes they find that they speak their language for a long time and they then they're happy. And I think, Wendy, it was your case too, right? Um, happy to find that you are not alone in the universe, that there are other people who speak the same language. And this is like one of the best miracles, one of the best proofs of of miracle, you know, must one of the best confirmations we get. When people join us who already spoke the language and then they realize that, you know, it's the same language other people speak. Um, and also we have, you know, Jim and many others, so it was like nine people speak an Arcturian language in one webinar. And then somebody sent us a link that you know, which was recorded a long time before that, when another girl elsewhere on the internet was speaking Arcturian language, not only speaking the language, but also showing the same type of Arcturian healing, which is like a finger walk. Arcturian healing uh, accompanied by the Arcturian language, which was the same, same unusual language, same unusual healing. So we have miracles all, all over the place, and this is one of the best. So the mechanism is, um, as I understand it, you just let it come through, and for galactic language, you don't have to speak to anyone. For channeling, it's nice, it helps to speak to someone, to have someone receiving the message. For galactic language, you have no clue initially what, what, what is coming through and what does it mean. And that helps, because you don't have any control of what is coming through. You don't have any censorship, any limitation. You're not afraid of what is coming through. And for me, I allow myself just to come 
just to bubble as a child as random sounds as possible. When I f discover they remind me some human words, I kind of block them. Maybe it's not a good idea, but well, that's what I do. I just make it as random as possible. And at the same time, as in poetry, I, I feel how does it feel. And if something feels really nice to me, really happy, then I, I repeat it over and over. I invite more. I kind of fuel it more. So I have conscious choice of what direction to fuel. So if something feels comfortable, I fuel it more. So it starts like that, and then I just kind of bubble, right? So either it's singing, chanting, or just prose, I just bubble, and maybe there are other ways, but that's 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 how I learned it. And you bubble like Yahana Hata Yahora Adaji Aau Aktina Hala Mam Chakata Shuka Shuka Rana Mahada Dada Yavaka Yavaka Shuta Chila Chila Hala Yana Yana Ha Yuhana Yahana Ha Yurata Yumaha Yumahana Jika Kata Yaka Rima Hala Yana Katura You are divine. You are perfection. You are the beauty. Wake up to your beauty. Wake up to your divine nature. Wake up. Shift yourself up. Lift yourself up. And the message will come. Open yourself to the spirit. And the spirit will open yourself, itself to you. Make your step forward to the spirit. And the spirit will step forward to you. You are one. Just wake up to this oneness. oneness. Wake up to this unity. And that is the answer. Um, any more comments, questions? Beautiful, thank you. Yes, that was beautiful. Thank you, Max. Um, I wanted to ask, do you ever get any like energetic physical sensations before you start a channel? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Um, Are they different with the different types of channels? Oh, um, sure. Yeah, Jim is an expert, so I, I, I share more like his experience. I was nearby. I was, I was the one who was doing the support when he was in channeling state. So, yeah, Jim always mentions that Bashar comes through the right ear or right side of the head. And I also exp experience that, you know, when the spirit comes, it feels like just part of the head Sometimes, like, the brain kind of becomes a little heavier, just a little, very comfortable, but, like, somebody's, like, pulling your, your hair a little down gently, uh, tenderly, but that would be the same thing for the brain. Like, they, when they enter, it's, like, psh, little down. Okay. Um, when I uh, do my meditations, um, let's talk a little bit about meditations. That's where I... Uh, uh, maybe that would be a nice illustration. So, so for a good meditation, your spine has to be straight and symmetrical, symmetrical, straight and symmetrical. So, yogi meditation is uh, is vertical. You sit down in whatever position, but the spine is the antenna, of the resonator, and for the spiritual energy going back and forth. In the spine, it's nice when it is more straight. Not not the direct line, but hu comfortable human straight. Because I think that that shape of the skull and the shape of the spine is specially designed to be resonating with the proper proper with with the, with the spirit. So your natural, comfortable, straight spine, not uncomfortable straight spine. And then, uh, my, my, you know, for me it's hard. I, 
I don't know. By some reason, it's hard for me to sit straight. I'm learning now, but but what I found the same thing is is working when you lay down. And you know, I spent like three minutes really wiggling with the with the pillow to get the spine straight, the bones, the the legs straight. You know, I think it's pace. And I learned it from one of the first very popular uh, channelers. It's uh, The Law of One. There are several books which are called The Law of One. And I'm blanking now on the name of the channeler, but it's one of the, you know, if you just Google The Law of One, it, you, will, you will find it. Um, and there they, they also, they did, there were two gentlemen who were helping a, a wife of one of these gentlemen to set up, they all, like, did support Reiki. She would, she would, uh, get into the meditative state, took like real effort, like maybe 15 minutes to get into meditation, and then she would channel. And, you know, Edgar Casey also was channeling through, you know, he was a sleeping prophet, right? He was getting to his sleep and then he would channel. So for him, I think when he kind of got to the speed, he would do it like in seconds, but really it takes some practice to, to, to get into on, on the other side. All right, so when I do my meditation, yeah, protection is important. At least it was important in early stages. Now I think I can, I'm much more tolerant to going into meditative state in unprotected, physically unprotected situation because I guess it becomes more a habitual thing. So in the past I had to have like the apartment empty, the door locked, the phones turned off, the windows closed, there is no disturbances. And then it would take me a lot of effort just to get into that state. And I wouldn't get to that state 100% time of time. You have to like really have a good diet, you know, not to drink coffee and, and things like that. And then you would get on the on other side, more like asleep, but conscious, conscious sleep with intention. And I always... I mean, in the beginning, I was doing intention, inviting the spirit, inviting specific spirits like Divine Mother, Jesus, uh, the extraterrestrials, which were, uh, you know, we know through Jim, uh, spirit guides, uh, other extraterrestrials, which I know through Medi and and. Um, uh, Angels, archangels, and so on. Positive, nice spirits. Um, many times, you know, I feel not very good, so it would be a healing meditation, and I would invite my my healers, and it could be very open. My healers, I invite my healers, and then you do a little conscious breathing. You might also consciously think about your heartbeat, like you kind of. Just pay attention to your heartbeat. When you're in quiet state, you can actually hear the heart and resonate with your heartbeat. Um, you know, as, as everybody mentions, the hardest part is to stop your worries about daily life. And for me, it is focusing in the center of the head. You know, some people focus on the, on the third eye, on the forehead, but... You know, for me, it worked better just to kind of shift my mind into the center of the head, like like we call it pineal gland. But but I'm not sure I'm hitting the pineal gland right away. I think it's a little forward maybe. But I'm focusing like in a big blob in the center of the head. Another possible way to focus is to focus in the heart or in the upper heart. This is a wonderful place. And if something hurts, it doesn't. It's, it's good. If something hurts, it's good to shift all your consciousness in the place where it hurts and grow a ball of a golden light there. So, so and it takes me usually like, I think maybe 10 minutes, 12 minutes just to get into the zone, into the right place. And when the spirit comes, it looks like light, which I, I wear the eye mask and had uh, uh, ear, ear, earmuffs, earmuffs, so... So when, when the light comes, I, you know, 
in the beginning, the, the, there was light coming. I was thinking maybe there is some car kind of flashing lights in the window. So I would open my um, uh, mask and see if there is any light around. And then I would, would do scientifically controlled analysis if it was light from the eyes or from the spirit. And of course, it, it distracts you. So, so you know, when you finish that analysis, you don't bother anymore to get distracted. So you kind of get in the space. Uh, one of the great exercises is mentally to push the energy from above down. And there is another flow of energy which you push from down up. You don't have to move your hands, but basically when you do that with hands, it's kind of easier first. And then you imagine doing it with hands without doing it with the hands. And you know that kind of clears the blockages. So meditation is important. and and then you go there, and usually whatever you experience there is very happy, but it is not something you can translate down here. You may grab a few words that up while you're exiting from there. You might grab a few words, translate it into words, and bring back the words. Or if you have a question, you can bring back the answer. But um, but it is the spirit world is not. It's not easily translatable. It's it's a different reality. Right, physical sensations. And then when you do a conscious channel, and basically you don't leave your body, you just speak for yourself and translate. So you ans ask the question and wait for the answer and deliver the answer. The presence of the spirit, good spirits feel like, I know, lots of different sensations, but um, goosebumps, you know, would be typical for me. And then, uh, and then, um, bad spirits when 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 join, you feel cold and numbness. Mm. You know, bad spirit is not a good word, but basically, yeah, spirits of the dead which are unhappy. I would say that, or the spirit of some of the ancient spirits of death. That's how they they feel. Not that they are bad, it just kind of, you know, it really depends on where you are in the, in the spiritual development. So we mentioned galactic languages, we mentioned uh, meditation. And the next tool for channeling is energy work, uh, healing energy work and related energy work. Most easiest, easiest path for energy work is yoga. So there is so many yoga studios, they're all good. Uh, and you can do yoga just by turning on the yoga on YouTube and, and learn from there. For Jim and I, it was Reiki. Reiki is different from yoga that, you know, you not only do it on yourself, you do it on others. And that doing on others is great help. So the introduction by a healer is great. So healers are today's gurus. You know, in the past, a student, a disciple, would find their guru, and the guru would lift them up, would leave their vibration up, help them clear their negative vibrations and boost, help them boost their positive vibrations. So the teacher would do that. And nowadays, I think it's much easier to find a healer than a spiritual teacher which would resonate with you. It's easy to find, I mean, it's possible to find a spiritual teacher, but that tradition of spiritual teachers which guide you through years of life, I don't know. It's 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 not as strong as before. Maybe the life is faster, so you jump from one teacher to another and pick up a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little there. So Mehdi, who is present here, was was a big upliftment 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 for me. And um, when I needed more of that vibration, I would come to the spiritualist church and experience that high vibration and 
actually take part in that high vibration, co-creating that high vibration. So being with high vibrational people is a huge help. And now you have that hangout system where you can be with high vibrational people from all over the globe, so that increases your capacity of finding the people and connecting to people radically. So, so that's a miracle, modern miracle, which helps a lot. Obviously, there are highly vibrational people right around, like in the same lo location, but not many of them are. It's it's harder to find them, but it's also possible. So, going around locally and finding spiritual s cluster centers, people who vibrate with you on the same, not only the same frequency, in the same mode of vibration. Like we have tons of tons of healers and spiritual people around, but somehow in San Diego the extraterrestrial component is is underrepresented or represented very differently. Like, you know, there is a ufology group which is more like in negative extraterrestrials or they are just still focused on just photographing the UFOs. And there are people who go watch for UFOs, but um, that kind of channeling, Jim, Jim's and Bashar's kind of channeling extraterrestrials, is not highly presented here. But still, I think it's 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 very. I, I urge you, you know, become that center, join with others, and um, network with others who do the. the spiritual work which is in line with yours. Find these people locally. It's, it, it is still possible. Uh, through, through healers, through psychic fairs, through networking events. And uh, the, the spirit gu guides the people to you. So you just kind of claim that you're looking and make yourself available and people will be drawn to you. So now when people come to me on the street or in s random social settings, I'm always thinking, is it, you know, are you really random or the spirit just wants me to to get in touch with that person? And the rate how often the, the, the random hits become really spiritual hits, you know, is amazing. So still there are still random connections, but um, there is, it, it's more and more happening. So we are being guided much. Any comments so far? No, this is all good stuff. <laughs> so the next joint um, initiation is Here. So the door is open. It's it's open for you. The door is open, it is open for you. Don't push hard. Don't fight. Don't use force. Allow yourself 
to step through. Allow yourself to discover yourself on the other side. It is all one. It is all permitted. It is natural. It is healthy. Just look on the other side and you will see yourself on the other side. You will discover yourself on the other side. You're on both sides at the same time. That's how it is. It is not unlike the mirror, but you're really on both sides on the same time. You are the spirit, and you are in the physical illusion. It's all right. It is how it should be, it is how you wanted it to be, and it is all part of the divine plan, of the divine plan. So, feel happy being in the physical, feel happy being with the spirit. The door is open. I bless you I bless your allowance. The spirit welcomes you on the other side. Any comments, questions? I'm enjoying watching the process. It's, uh, technology is pretty amazing. Thank you. Any comments, questions? Let's talk about the difficulties, right? So, when Jim started channeling, it was hard for him. He was always a psychic. He was always hearing the messages, always praying, always working with the spirit. But entering, allowing their trans channel and allowing the spirit to come through, first took uh, took some effort and took some toll on his feelings, like on his no health. So I would not allow the spirit to stay there for longer than, let's say, half an hour initially. And I was doing Reiki and um, watching over him, and basically I was doing the support part. And very soon our extraterrestrial friends started, started manipulating with Jim's body, with his permission, and tuning him up to become a better channeler. And at some point, it was uh, they put implants into his throat, so so to improve channeling, and it hurt. And uh, Jim complained to them, and they kind of tweaked it one way or another. But but after a while, he kind of accumulated, not accumulated, assimilated the implants, and uh, it became easier for him. And same thing for me. It was. I didn't get the channeling implants, but I got some other implants, and it's always a choice. You know, do you hate this implant? Are you afraid of the implant, or you kind of accept it? And when I realized it's from the friends, I, I took, you know, I accepted the pain of assimilation, and then gradually the body kind of adjusted and stopped rejecting the implants. But you know, it was very strange pains coming after you know allow, you allowed them doing that. So there was a conversation with the aliens and they, they, they did some help. Um, so for us it was you know clearly the service to the humanity. We wanted the message to come through. We wanted to and we still want the 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 contact to happen and to facilitate the contact. And the the contact is already happening. We're already talking to the extraterrestrials. Uh, now it's it's up to the humanity to get this message and 
prepare for the open official physical contact. Um, so big part of that is is energetic clearing up, energetic purification of yourself. So you get used to that. Initially it's hard to get to, to do channeling. Even if you don't do trans channel, even if you do psychic work, it's like hard work to bring the spirit and keep the spirit in, in yourself and not to get burned. And then it becomes so natural it's hard not to get spirit. Uh, if you're, you know, when you're already a channel for the spirit, not having a spirit channeling through you or speaking through you is is like you're not doing the job and what is the point of doing, you know, of this physical suffering in the, in the, in the physical plane, you know, rather than doing the channeling, right? So, so first it is a hard effort to become a channeler and then not being a channeler is, is sort of a waste of time and waste of opportunity. So um, just walk through that path and understand it's, it's very natural. It is where the humanity is moving. In the future, everyone will be psychic. Everyone will be telepathic. Everyone will be connected to the spirit. And ultimately, the reincarnation will be much easier because you will keep the memory of the past incarnations. Right now, for the, for the purpose of this extreme forgetfulness, of the, this extreme dream, the reincarnation is done in a way that your past life memories are blocked. You have the talents, you have the experiences, you have the know-how, but you have no idea where from you get it. So you just, you know, you are born with musical talent or public speaking talent or writing talent. You just develop it and it just comes out. Or engineering or drawing or human relations, whatever. But, you know, that just is borrowed from your past life. So you just kind of redevelop it, which is much faster. Um, but extra our extraterrestrial friends, they reincarnate with their full memory of the past lives. Uh, obviously, the smaller child brain cannot handle that much of the past life experience. But as you grow, you can easily connect to the past lives and draw their experience from there. And some of that experience is positive, and some of this experience is past traumas which you're clearing up, cleaning up, resolving, healing in this life. So the art of channeling is how to stay in this high vibration, how to allow as much spirit to come through you, and for that you need to purify yourself and heal yourself. So that's where energy work is absolutely helpful. You know, Jim and I came through to channel through the energy work. And that's meditation, self-clearing with energy work, self-clearing with the diet, all other healing health practices. And most of all, is the law of attraction, the positive attitude. And when you do healing, that positive attitude, you are taught this positive attitude. You heal yourself by just choosing the positive, choosing the positive outcome. So by living to, learning to live with Transforming the fears in positive attitude is, is the answer, basically. So these days, when a next fear comes to me, and these fears could be pretty profound and pretty old, like the fear of death, or fear of sickness of others, fear of trauma, and lots of other fears, right? Fear of ne neglection, fear of making errors, fears of being judged by others. So now it's easy. I just say, um, 
and invite the spirit and say, here's the experience. I invite the spirit. I believe in you. No, that's not what I say. I don't say I believe in you. I say, here you go. That's what I say. Come over. Enjoy it. Uh, I trust in you. That's what I say. Yeah. I trust in you. Here is a new experience, new trauma to heal. I know if I'm on this physical plane, is it's unsolvable. So I give up right away. It just, you know, a fear for people who are dear to you is like, you know, it can't really take responsibility. So whatever is a, is a mantra. Whatever. The spirit, please come here. I'm yours. Here is a challenge. I choose a positive outcome. I choose to believe that it is an illusion and I'm creating it. I choose to create a positive outcome by smiling first. So that teaching of Bashar that the life is illusion, life is an illusion, life is a mirror, and you smile first and a life smiles in response. So that's, you know, the main lesson. And it works also for channeling. How do you channel and not to be harmed by the spirits? You choose a positive outcome. You connect to the highest possible div divinity, to the highest creator, to the highest divine mother, which is not a person. It is the vibration, it is the light, it is the force which penetrates everything. It is the source energy, something which goes beyond the matter and even beyond the light, which is a vibration, something which is beyond, beyond any of physical manifestations the ultimate spirit. So invite it and become a channel. Yeah, so solving problems by becoming a channel, that becomes a daily habit, I guess. Right. And then purifying yourself is a work of finding what is your fear. So as Bashar says, what's your fear? If something hurts, what is your fear? If, so, if you're angry, if you are angry, what is your fear? If you are blocked, what is your fear? If you got stuck, what is your fear? <laughs> if it hurts. Um, and even if you desire something, if you feel that you are lost your balance and you really want something, what is your fear? <laughs> So moving forward while staying in the balance is art of channeling. All right. Alahana yaha yana hayana ha o ranamaya o ranamaya o ranahana now, a wonderful analogy is to realize that this illusion of physical life is a computer code, it's a computer game, it's a very good computer game, very realistic, programmed not by humans, not by extraterrestrials, not by a single individual. It is a creation of many layers of the spirit, many layers of the spirit, by many talented groups, coll collectives of the spirit, of something which is beyond our understanding. But it's still a program. It is still a programmed illusion. And this illusion has unique properties, which are taught in many secret teachings and many 
religions. They are kind of penetrated many religions. So, and the main property is the law of attraction. Like attracts like. And uh, the past is created from the present. It's, it's hard to grasp, but in the now, in this moment, the time is a good illusion. It's really steady. I can watch the, the computer clock change in numbers. But the past is created from the now. So here is an example. You, uh, you know, I, I, it, it came to me in the hard way. Uh, don't try to, cha to judge channeling by human standards. And that penetrates all the religion. Don't try to judge the miracle by human standards. Don't try to judge the divine providence by human standards, by the physical laws, by the law of cause-consequence. Like in this illusion, cause and consequence are kind of tied together. You drop a pen, oops, and it falls down, right? Uh, and it's like the fact that it fell down was caused by the fact that I dropped it, right? Uh, and in a... Uh, in a in the channel, and it's just not like that. It's it's it can seem like that, but it's not exactly like that. So here is an example, like which troubled me a lot. Like I ask our friend, higher friend, say the same same channel being, what is the percent of my uh, alien DNA? And they give me a certain percent to the decimal point, like whatever. 22.22, right? And because they give you decimal point, they think, oh, it should be very precise, right? And then a couple of months pass and ask, what is the percent of my alien DNA? And they give you a completely random number and also the alien races which were given before you don't match. It would be a new answer. And that troubled me a lot. It was like observed it many times and, you know, how possibly can it be that they give the precise answer and it's different every time. And at the same time, in parallel, they give so many beautiful answers which are perfect match, which is perfect miracle. Like, for example, um, that story of reincarnation, of ascension, goes through so many spiritual teachings, like even Christianity has it, even Judaism has it. Even uh, people who are not on the internet, like the old style psychics who are not reading stuff, they give you the story. The children give you that story. Uh, uh, the there is site. Uh, I think it's called Hybrid Children. You know, children who are like small, like two, three years old, they draw aliens and stuff. And it, it comes all together. There is so many confirmations. So there is there are consistent stories, and there are random things, right? Like one of the most consistent uh, answers I got is on friends, new friends, new people I meet. Like I meet some person, I go to a certain channel, say Jim or other channeler. And I ask, so I met such and such, and like two words, maybe five words describing the person. Very little. And and it doesn't really matter who I speak to. It will be like Kesh, Takur, uh, angels, archangels. Doesn't really matter, like the spirit there, uh, high spirits there. And they will give you a nice characteristic of the person motivations and your relationship, how it will develop, how to perceive it. And so far it was like 99% like perfect, perfect match, perfect heat, perfect advice. So that rarely failed, like almost never. And it, it's not only Jim, it's, it's through different channelers. So these things somehow work perfectly. And then 
And how does it connect to the fact that they can't really, from day to day, the answers are different on the percent of, of alien DNA? So that bothered me until I realized it's, it's, you know, from their perspective, from, say, perspective of extraterrestrial, they give you perfect answer at that moment and that connection. But they come from a completely different universe, completely different reality. Only maybe the star names are the same in that reality. Everything else is different. They are from a parallel, higher dimensional world. And also they mentioned that, you know, they, it's a great question to ask. They not only talk to us in this timeline, you know, Takur works to works with several other timelines where parallel realities are different, and just do works with several other timelines, and the angels work with different other timelines. You know, when you ask, you realize you're not the only one. There are, there are Maxis and Jims in parallel realities, and it would be quite different. Um, so they give you perfect answer for this connection from their time, which is different, to our time, which is different, and your state of mind, and that illusion, and based on the, your state of mind and that illusion, the answer is perfect. And I had the chance once, only once, where I had two channeling sessions with different channels, just happened that this was scheduled at this, like, tail, head to tail, one next after another, just happened. And they didn't know each other, didn't speak to each other, and they gave me a perfect matching answer. So your state of mind defines what the answer. You create your reality. So in that reality, in that moment, that percentage is perfect. But then a month passes or two months passes and the past changes. Right? So the past is not fixed. So the answer is who you are at the moment and your ancestry, your genome is recreated from your current state. So uh, here is a story of um, uh, one uh, man who, from the past, who was suffering from diabetes and it, he was given by doctors three months to live. So he decided that he will pray and ask God to extend his life. So he prayed, meditated all the three months, and by the end of three months he discovered that he can live longer. So after a year of praying, the doctors were surprised he's still alive. After three years of praying, finally the God uh, fixed his body. Basically there was a big transformation where the God just entered. So he was asking for God to enter his body. The God entered and um, make, 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 made him healthy again, completely. So, so the miracles happened. Why do I talk about that? I don't know. That was a, a line of thought which, which was broken. But basically, um, the past changes, the health changes, your genetics changes, the spirit is capable of changing it, and you are capable of changing it. That's That was the point. So, Pray in a new way, right? Uh, I invite, I want, I desire. It's my right. It is, yes, it is my trust in positive outcome, right? I trust in positive outcome. I invite the positive outcome. Interesting. So I trust in um, in the positive outcome, and um, and it and 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 it will change your reality basically. So that's how you clear yourself up. That's how you get used to the energies. Uh, in the past, one channeling session would get me out of balance for a day or two. I would possibly have to go to a Reiki healer just to. So after somebody would enter me even partially, I would still have to go through Reiki process to recover and to get back to health. Otherwise, I would be like shaken and, and um, 
not able to function in a physical life. So the lesson which I learned was to shift back and forth and get it, get used to that. And maybe know your limits. So for me, trans channeling is sort of not very healthy yet. So I um, I go on with the psychic state, psychic, psychic. It's not a good word, but go. To, I do the psychic work. I do conscious channeling. I go to elevated state, deliver the message, but but don't go further. So it takes some practice, learning, energy work to get to get get it right. Uh, here is a good understanding of uh, chakras. So what happens is. Uh, you're born with root chakra active. And there's a survival, basic functions of housekeeping, uh, procreation, and physical work. And then you develop to second chakra, which is communication, Exchange, marketing, advertisements, television. The third chakra is governance, management, force, power, sun. The traditional human values, hierarchy, control. And you develop that. And it's easier now because you have many past lives where you already developed that. So you kind of grow back into the in that, into that. And keep in mind you're recreating your ego consciousness from scratch. What you're creating in this life will be your personality, new personality, it will live forever. Your personality will survive after living the physical body and it will not be transformed by the future incarnations. It's like a child to past incarnations and it's a parent to future incarnations. So you, that you, will, will live forever. And will be partially independent of other incarnations. It's your personality which you're creating right now you're building it, you're growing it as you would grow the garden, as you would grow your own child. You grow into it, you create it strong. And three, three basic chakras are the old humanity. Then you lift to the new humanity, which is, which is heart. And heart is telepathy, empathy, connection, emotion, love, and healing. So the heart the vertebrae on which are on the level of the heart, that's the distance which defines from your head to your heart level. That's the frequency of vibration and that's how the spirit uh, gives you the, the Reiki healing vibration. So the Reiki energy comes through the hands, through the heart. That's where the spirit's kind of focuses when, when the energy, healing energy is sent. So the channeling usually comes through the higher chakras, which is throat, third eye, crown chakra. So these three and in between, these vibrations are higher. So you go from basic chakras to the healing art to galactic languages. And then all three of those are working on creating the channeling, allowing the spirit to channel, to get the communication back and forth. So to stay, to bring the spirit high and to feed the energy in the body, the vibration of energy in the body, it takes healthy body to, to keep the spirit in the body and for a long time. So again, Jim went from half an hour in the beginning. In three years, he grew up into being able to support spirit. In a row, it would be like almost two hours on a webinar and... During the day, he does several channeling sessions. So for him, channeling becomes like you know lifting the 
phone receiver and uh, you know talking to God all the time, right? So it's 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 that easy. It takes a lot of support and prayer and purification, but at 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 a certain point it becomes natural, and it's it's great. So that's what we want all want to do. Now, when you come back, it's um, when you come back, it's it is the the art of keeping your health in good shape, keeping your body in good shape. So you shift to the channeling state and back, to the channeling state and back. And uh, clear it up, purify it up, get your body used to that and build that muscle of channeling, build a mu muscle of psychic work. Um, one more um, tip, one more skill, one more piece of knowledge which you should keep in mind is that you're in charge, you're responsible. So whatever you decide, whatever you desire, is what will manifest. It's again the law of attraction, but kind of it is a know-how. So if things go wrong, it is in your capacity. It's it's your so sovereignty to bring it back. So if the spirit sort of possesses your body, you just claim your body back. If uh, something spiritual going on, you should be able, you are entitled for for your life and you're entitled for your wishes. Uh, so just desire it. Feel that you're, like, remember your past incarnations as a ruler, your past incarnations as a king as a tribe shaman, as a tribe leader, as a head of the family. You are in charge. That's basically, that's the message. Um, you know, comes to, it comes to mind this the old story when um, an old, you know, there was a, an alchemical experiment and demonstration when they read some scriptures and invited some spirits and the spirit came as a as a negative spirit, as a dark cloud and a dark vortex. So most of the people present just started to try, try to run away or hide and prayed. And uh, the one who was running the, sh the the show, the experiment, he took his sword and he was a knight. And he was just spinning his sword, uh, commanding, telling the spirit to succumb and leave. So, and it worked. So basically, even if something huge and strange is happening, you're in charge. You just entitled to to tell it to to do the right thing, and of course, invite your friends, your spirit friends, invite divine mother, divine essence, and um, you are that strong. You're basically the answer is you are that strong. You're in charge. And for me the, and Jim, it all often, very often happens in Reiki sessions when things go not wrong but unexpected, when people have experiences. You're in charge. You just say what you think is right and define that vibration. You define the vibration. You choose the tone of negotiation. You choose the language and even you, you choose the timing. That was one of the psychic messages I got. I'm getting often. You choose the timing. Nobody is rushing you. Nobody is defining your timing for you. You decide when and how much of that you want. So you choose the timing. You choose the mode. You're in charge. But again, you're a channel. So you're in charge of being channeling, and then whatever comes through, comes through. So I will give you that initiation that tune in oh 
You are in charge. You are in charge. You are in charge. You define your timing. You define the mode of your vibration. You define your experience. You are in charge. Allah nama hai Allah nama hai Allah nama hai ya Allah na Allah na Allah Mahaya Any comments questions before I finish Just beautiful, Max. Thank you. You've um, telepathically, of course, managed to answer all of my questions without even me asking. So thank, thank you. Thank you for asking. Definitely. That was very good, Max. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Max. It was a wealth of knowledge. I look forward to uh, listen to the uh, replay and uh, go a little deeper with all that info. Thank you. Excellent, Max. All that information was needed for today. It was very good. Now. Any questions, comments? Oh, you're starting. All right. Thank you. So oh. I thank you all. And I pass the microphone to Jim, right? Hello. Hello. Can you Hello. hear me? Hi, Jim. Yes. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear great. Okay, great. Well, that was excellent information. Absolutely well done. Thank you so much for that. That was great. Now, my part will be a little bit more interactive. We're going to take a lot of that information and put it into action or put it into a, a different sense of reality. Um, that sense was very, was beautiful. It was intellectual. It was energetic. It was it formed very nicely and now we're going to we're going to take the horse to water and hope that he'll drink so <laughs> for those of you that are not channeling <laughs> but I wanted to say a couple things first I love the way that he started off with telling you about permission you do have permission to channel this is something that not everybody, no one can give you. You have to give it to yourself. You have to understand that you do have that permission to channel. And uh, I heard Wendy say something earlier about, well, sometimes she can't get all the way into the channel sessions because there is a little fear or hesitation or whatever it is that comes in. But, I noticed that her messages come out very pure, that her messages are coming out the way that Spirit intended them to. So what you need to do, Wendy, is just relax because everything is there that is necessary for the purity of the message. And let me tell you what will happen if you relax even more is that the message will continue and there will be something else that will come. There will be an addition to the information. There will be more to more and more and more because the information will become greater, more expansive, 
and it will reach more people on more levels. What you do when you lose your fear is you begin, begin to translate in many levels. But we'll get into that a little later, but I just wanted to mention that to you. Thank you. Uh, is, there is there any? Exactly what they've been telling me, so that's exactly why I needed to be here today. Thank you. You're welcome. And, um, yes, Max was uh, there when I channeled for the first time. He was. I was doing energy healing on Max when I started to channel. And so, yes, there are different triggers for channeling, energy healing, languages, perhaps empathy and uh, tele telepathy, and perhaps even the energy of going to the colonies, those of you who have, who have gone. But, but um, not everyone channels the same. And I don't think there are two channelers that are exactly alike. And the reason I say that is this. Not every two channelers channel the same person or the same entities. There are some overlapping, perhaps. Takur may come through. Grindel may come through. Other people or, or different things like that. But no two channelers channel all the same people. Isn't that true? Now, the reason for that is this. There are different places in the brain where the channels are open. There are different places in your psyche that has an idea of who you're going to channel from the beginning of time in some ways. Do you understand that? That these people are meant to come through. These people are meant to be with you and they're fit into your uh, particular situation and you will be able to speak for them and you have been chosen for that with for them because you are a person that can get the message that they have to say across the best so now examine yourself a little bit and say well what kind of entities will be coming to me then and the the answer to that question is the ones that will fit you the best the ones that you relate to the best the ones that are close to your heart and the ones that will give the best message to the people. Now, I'm going to take all the information that um, Max gave and put it into action in some ways because what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to each one of you about your own particular skills and about your own particular experiences with channeling but first, we've been going for over an hour and a half now, so why don't we take a break? <laughs> oh, you're Jim, you're awesome. <laughs> uh, some people have to go to the bathroom. I can just sense it. I, I'm, I'm channeling the restroom right now. So. <laughs> um, so we will be back in, um, can we do 10 minutes? Is that enough? Perfect. Yes. All right. Enjoy a small break, and then we'll come back, and we'll put things into action, perhaps. Okay. Okay. Jennifer. See you in 10. Okay. to comment on that but I just want people to know that 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 sometimes that's how it feels because the love is so big sometimes you don't even realize what's come over you and it's for me it's been an, an extremely emotional experience so especially with angels and spiritual beings yes the emotion is very strong with love and affection and caring and leaving the body in a good state I know some people get exhausted from channeling. I don't. I believe that if when they if you let the, the spirit in in a certain way that they just refresh you instead of exhaust yes. you. I, now, I feel energized. Some beings will exhaust you because they're 
they although they are of the spirit, they have a different kind of approach to being a part of your channel. So they can drain you if if they're not properly approaching the channel session. Does that make sense to you? It's them that are that are causing you to be exhausted if they don't approach you correctly. But the spirit usually presents himself in a really wonderful and beautiful way that is very refreshing, light, light love. Yes. One thing I wanted to touch on just for a second that we haven't mentioned was a lot of us who are writing galactic languages, actual symbols and things like that, I, I, want, um, I want people out there to know that that too is a form of connection and channeling and that... Okay. To understand that that is a part of that's also a part of opening the channeling and activating something within you. Um, I've also received um, the the hand, you know, like the hand signs and things. So people get that. To Kerr was one of the first to make me aware of that during one of your channeling sessions, like a couple of years ago, when she said, "Watch my hands while I'm channeling." Watch Jim's hands while he's channeling me. And that stuck in my mind ever since then. And since that time, I've always watched your hands. And information does come through to me yes. that way as well. And I also had an experience recently, which is this is a whole new thing I wanted to mention to people, is I was given the message to two different people who are hearing impaired that they, too, are needing to channel to the hearing impaired. Because some read lips and some don't. Some do sign language and some don't. So that's another message out there to anybody who is um, who is uh, sight impaired, hearing impaired, or any, in any way other challenged, is to for all of us to find a way to reach those people as well. And and don't forget Tony. And Tony, um, absolutely. There's a lot of echo. Is, ever, is everybody hearing the echo? Yeah, echo okay, is so only when. Yeah, you need to mute uh, Wendy, and then then it disappears. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Also, toning is a very very powerful form of channeling that the Hathors have introduced to the Earth. Yeah. Um, it's been around for a long long time. However, it's becoming more powerful because it equalizes vibration and and brings harmony to nature and things of this nature it's just beautiful so and our our lovely sarah does that so well and and so many of you katie wendy and many of those people that were there last weekend are now starting to realize that it's a, a very powerful form of channeling. Oh, truly. And I've actually been able for quite some time to actually translate a lot of the half or toning from Sarah's Hangouts. So there's definitely information there. Yes. Absolutely. Alrighty then. I will bring in someone, an angel, if that's what you prefer. Whoever has the best message. Oh, okay, very good. All right, thank you. All right, you can mute yourself, Wendy, so that I don't echo. <laughs> very good, thank you. It is good to be with you. 
Thank you for coming. I'm Uriel. Thank you, Uriel. We have Thank a you for having me. I did not hear you. We are having a channeling class, and we invite your blessing, uh, instruction, and initiation into channeling. Thank you. There are many spiritual messages that need to get through to our earth, that need to get through to those that have turned cold, that those who have are taking the words of God and spirit and twisting them into their own ways of manipulation and thought processes to not help the earth, but damage thought processes and give themselves a greater place. But I know that you are all here for a specific purpose, to learn how to bring information in from beyond. And it is a lovely and beautiful thing if you use it properly. I will give you all a blessing and pray that you are all in tune to the positivity that is the spirit of God, the greater good of all. I will speak an angelic language that you might understand. It uses some Hebrew words, but not many anymore. Sarhahuta Adonai Gawaha Acham Sholom Shasheria and Suta Kuwa Kura Koson Sifianti Munya Hata Shundaha Yeshawata, no hotsi son hotia, ha la shonsi hallelujah ka. Monan so, Adonai kawa, shons fishisha, akletos mirsia diabwa. Yeshu. Kim Shun Shantia Homo Shun and Water Homon Shuntia of Yet Yet to I bring you blessings from God. Our Father, our Mother, our Creator, our essence, and our reason for existence. May you rise up and speak great truth, and let the people listen. Speak of love. Speak from the love of your heart. Speak the truth. And if anything does not resonate as true, spit it out and let it fall. Only those words that rise up must be heard in this day and age. There is enough negativity on your world for two worlds. Be of good cheer because God still is in charge and he knows of all your weaknesses and strengths. 
I will be with you always. Rise up. In the words of God and in the spirit of positivity and enlightenment. Be blessed. Thank you. Fill your hearts now and understand that this is beautiful and needed, the healing, the healing. There's so much damage. My heart pours out to you. I will go now. But I love you all, and know that the angels are with you, and God our Father, Creator and Mother, essence of all, is with you as well. Thank you, Max. I was just saying thank you. So the steps are simple. The big task might seem too big for a little person, but you know, just stepping on the road and walking the path is sufficient. Just intention and smile is sufficient. Just trust is sufficient. The connection to the divine is primary, initial, original, native for us. So that desire to reconnect to the mother may drive your path. Just a simple desire to be with the creation, to be home may drive your path. That is the path home. So simple steps are simple. Rise your energy up and deliver. Just deliver, just channel, just be a messenger. Yeah. <laughs> the simplest job of all, just be a messenger. <laughs> Yeah, be a messenger. Grab the message and deliver. Grab a message and deliver. Seek for those who need the messages and deliver them. That's all. It is that simple. Allah Allah Thank you. Is there any more comments or questions? That was an awesome class. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm glad. Thank you, you for that beautiful message, Jim, from Muriel. Thank you. 
Yes, thank you. And thank you, Max, for your beautiful toning and messages as well. Yes, beautiful. Thank you. Thank it you. Was a pleasure. Yeah, go ahead. It was a pleasure to speak to all of you and to teach you. I hope you got a lot out of it. I hope that you, you take this with you and that you it will uh, continue to grow in you because there was many seeds planted today that will make you a better channeler if you're channeling already or bring out the, the channel in you if you're not channeling yet or whatever is necessary. There are things there that will help you. Go ahead, Max. Yeah, thank you all for stepping forward. Thank you all for opening up. We are all mirrors of each other. We are all helping each other to succeed. And the success is happiness. The success is reuniting with home, reuniting with the spirit, re reuniting with the essence. Yes. And the Beautiful. Yes. And the, the path is still you have lots of choices. So don't be afraid to make choices and invite the spirit to be with you when you make choices, to guide you when you make choices, and to experience life through your eyes, through your senses. Be one with the spirit. And that's the simplest path to channeling. <laughs> channel your life. Channel the spirit through your life. All right. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day, everybody. I love you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Max. Thank you. We love you, too. Much love to you. Every blessing. Much love. I hope you got a lot out of it. Very much. I love you all. Love you too. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Thank you. Thank you.